this meeting to order. If you'd all please rise and join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Matt, if we could have roll call. Councillor Allen. Here. Demas. Here. Pedri. Here. Zadi. Here. Hickerson. Here. Hansen. Here. Batolo. Here. Robinson. Present. Mayor Mickelson. Here. Okay. Before we uh, invite our outside agencies up to present, I just wanted to say a, a sort of brief overview. Uh, the Budget Committee and I have been meeting with all of the department heads and looking at the requests. Um, and it feels like a lot of time uh, for us, but it is very much something that pales in comparison to the work that folks have put into preparing these preliminary budgets. Uh, and as is all too often the case, the needs, uh, and they are needs that the departments have uh, have outpaced our revenue. So it is uh, a daunting task as we go through and try to prioritize the spending of public funds in the way that best serves the city. Uh, and then I think our president has some remarks he'd like to make. Yeah, I just quickly, just with this budget session, um, kind of a state of where we are with things. And I know with a lot of you, Looking at past funding in that, um, we did end up cutting quite a bit over the years. You're now working to try and get back to where you were. But I'd like to just express, and, and hopefully you understand the position we're in as well, that we do have aging infrastructure, aging equipment that we're trying to replace. We need to update. Um, equipment's vitally important for the safety of our staff and everything else, and we've asked our department has to provide a budget they feel they need to move forward in the prudent manner for the city and to be able to serve the city and the citizens with the services they've come to expect and they've done the right thing in requesting um, reserves that we set some some money aside a little bit at a time in order to pay for things like a million dollar fire apparatus um, safety equipment for the fire department uh, police vehicles um, and other equipment. At this point right now, a lot of those requests for reserve funding are probably gonna be cut. We don't have the ability to set aside that savings. And so it's been kind of a struggle. Um, and it's unfortunate because we try to do the right thing, we just can't get there. And so with a lot of these requests, Keep in mind of where we are as a city. We'd love to be able to fund everybody to the full extent that they need, um, but there's just going to be some limits to what we're able to do. And I hope everybody understands that. So, thank you. Okay. With that, I would like to invite the Boys and Girls Club up to present. One. I was like seven and I was okay with that and then I seen I was number one and I had a full anxiety attack So if I shake or cry <laughs> Sorry, don't. I don't want to put any pressure on you, <laughs> but you're gonna set the pace for the entire movie. I know <laughs> And I've already ruined it because I'm just like off course. I'm just gonna go with that now. I'm done. Thank you No. <laughs> um, thank you honorable mayor city councilwomen and men for your time for having us up here um, we do appreciate uh, all community members and organizations for you guys at least having us and thinking and letting us at least put in an application for this. We know that the city has struggled for a couple of years. Nonprofits have done as well. Um, not only have the resources been lowered, but we're trying to rebuild from where we were prior to COVID. So 
the the kids that we were seeing have lowered. They were lowered when we were able to come back in June of 2020, and we've just rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. We're up to about 150 a session where we were at about 219. So that's that's a big difference when it looks at your budget for dollars. And everybody says, well, it takes less people, but it really doesn't take less people because we still need to clean the facility, we still need to prep the facility, we still need to feed the children, and we still need to have people there to answer the phones to write the grants and do those things. And um, so we still need people to walk in the door. And so, you know, that's what we're just trying to look at. Since the pandemic, um, it's been hard for nonprofits and other agencies to get employees. Our competitive resources are a lot different. We can't compete um, wage-wise. I just lost somebody that was here for five years. Their starting wage when they walk in will be over $17 an hour. And in three months, they'll be over 20. As a nonprofit, we're just like, we don't know what to do. How do you do that? So, you know, we're struggling in different ways as, as um, I'm sure you guys are with trying to get people to work and those things. Um, we come here today, um, our budget ask is $5,000. Um, we're very thankful. Um, in 2020, it was the first time that we were on the agenda, I believe, and I got the terrible phone call. <laughs> I got three phone calls in one night that were all terrible. <laughs> and um, and that's just the way our world went. And But we all pulled up our britches and we just all kept going, just like you guys did. And so we're happy that we we're still there, happy to still make sure that our kids have a safe place to learn and grow, to provide them with, you know, that supportive educational resource. Um, the biggest thing that we've seen is social-emotional. A lot of the kids seem to be struggling a little bit more. We're not really sure why. Maybe uncertainties, maybe what they went through. Maybe them and their parents weren't used to being home together that much. That's something. That's, that's a lot of something. So it was a little bit of struggle. Learning to learn from home on a computer where they weren't used to doing that was a struggle not only for the children, but for the parents too because they're not teachers. So we're like seeing that little bit of difference. Um, we are working um, with a well, our request is to help us with our triple play. Triple play helps with building skills. I just want to make sure I get it right. Attitudes, knowledge, and behavior essentials, and healthy lifestyles. Um, it helps develop relationships, and that's a big thing. If kids can have a relationship not only at club, but at school, at home, and in the community, they're going to be more successful. So we're there to give them a safe place to be consistent and to help them so that one day they can be in your seats and help our community to grow. And so our big push is to keep kids off the street. Because if they're on the street and they're causing troubles, then your other department heads are going to have an increase in what's going on. And that's a proven fact. From the hours of three to six, when parents are still working and kids are on the street, they learn with their feet. They just walk. And a lot of kids are just out there. They don't really intentionally mean to be troublemakers. But when you're bored and you have nothing to do and you see a rock, what do you do? You throw it. Sometimes you don't know where it's going to land, but it could be somebody's window. It could be somebody's car. You see a leftover spray paint can that somebody left in a ditch. What are you going to do with it? Well, you think you're an artist, but you're not. And that's going to land you in a little bit of trouble, too. So our hope is that we can help children, school-age children, make good choices. If you see that can, put it in the garbage. Tell your friends that's not a good idea. Leave the rock and keep walking. So that you, they, so we don't get them into that system, because once we know they're in the system, it costs our community a lot of dollars. And so that's what we're here, is to ask you to help support us with, the, with our kids and our families. And I didn't cry yet. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> Council, do you have any uh, thoughts or questions? Question yeah. concerning, you said the numbers, you used to be at like 219, you're now down yeah. to 260, 160? Uh, yeah, we're, seeing, we're having register about the 150 to 160. Is I'm that walking. lack of students yeah. wanting to be there or your lack of ability, you don't have the capacity to... I think that um, a lot of people still, like things have changed. We've seen a lot of kids move. Texas, Midland, Texas, we've lot of, lost a lot of kids to Midland, Texas. It's been pretty crazy. Um, not only that, I think um, as much as I go to work every day, I think a lot of people just haven't really had that need 
have to do it yet. And I think a lot of businesses are, have been a lot more accommodating, but I think that's starting to change as we see it's growing and growing and growing. We're into our summer and we're about, we're up about 30% at the same time that we were last year. So we're seeing that grow and grow. And so my, our concern has been is that even though, um, our budget doesn't consist of a high amount of dollars from our families after three years, of that, it sure does hit your budget and what your resources look like. Um, another thing that has happened, um, we have an older building, as everybody knows. Um, our sewers were pretty old, and anyway, we put about, in eight months, we put out $60,000 to fix two sewers because the trees are, you know, they just love those little joints, and it's, yeah, apparently we have a lot of joints, <laughs> and so <laughs> they've had to come in and, and shoot those so that we could you know, so that our kids can use the bathroom while they're there. And so that's put a little, a little ding on, on, you know, what we're doing. And those are the things that you, you have a reserve for, but you don't want to pull from, but you have to. And so, you know, we're just facing the same thing as everybody else is. Older stuff, things that need to be done. The increase of cost of just everything. Overhead to utilities to wages is just, it's everywhere. So... Yay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd invite the Rock Springs Library up next. Good evening, Mayor Mickelson and council members. I'm Lindsay Travis. I'm the director for the Sweetwater County Library System. I'm here on behalf of the Rock Springs Library. Um, the Rock Springs Library continues to be a busy go-to place for community members of all ages. Um, just last month, the library hosted 36 um, uh, programs with an overall attendance of 1,300 um, people. And the Discovery Center that's located within the Rock Springs Library had 1,350 um, visits in March. On most days um, after school, the library is full of kids who hang out there until the building closes. So a lot of the kids who are not at the Boys and Girls Club, you will find at the Rock Springs Library. Um, so we are also working to help keep kids off of the streets. Oftentimes those kids come in after school, they're hungry, we feed them, we make sure that they're um, safe while they're there. Um, the library also hosts many school visits um, and visits to the Discovery Center, so kids in our community are learning to check out materials and learning about the importance of library resources. And events held throughout the summer, including the library's reading summer reading program, are very well attended by people in the community. We've also started hosting programs for adults. One of our librarians created a really fun um, art program for adults in the evenings. Um, the library also participate participates in events that are put together by downtown Rock Springs. The majority of this is possible because of the funding that we get from the city of Rock Springs. Our ask this year is for $20,000. The library will prioritize um, that those funds in three categories. The first is to maintain the former Carnegie Library, which is the part of the library that the city um, continues to own. Um, the second is to maintain the Children's Discovery Center, which is the learning-based children's museum that is located within the library. And the third is to fund library program programming for youth throughout the year. So that would, uh, with those funds, twelve hundred or $12,500 would be for building maintenance and supplies, $1,500 for the Children's Discovery Center, and $6,000 for youth programming. Um, the increase that we're asking for would be to help with the maintenance. Um, we do have an aging building. We have things that are constantly needing to be repaired, including the um, HVAC. We have some windows that we're looking to re replace. Um, and also, we're um, looking for additional funds for youth programming. Last year, we were able to supplement our youth funding with a grant from Wyoming Humanities, but we can't renew that, so we are, aren't going to be able to get that again this year. So that's what I have. Do you have any questions? Kelsey? Thank you. Okay, I would next invite the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce up. Thank you, Mary Mickelson and City Council. We really appreciate all the work that you put into for all of us, for the time that you spend and for the work that you do. And we understand the daunting task, and I don't envy what you have to do uh, with this budget. Um, we are asking for $30,000 this year. This is a, a request that is uh, $2,349 more than, than the previous two years. 
but it is five thousand five hundred fifty dollars less than it than we asked in twenty twenty. Um, and just for a point of reference, it's sixteen thousand two hundred dollars less than what was asked for in twenty fourteen. And uh, Mr. Zadi, we know we, I, I understand your comments at the beginning, and we we surely appreciate. As I said earlier, all the work that, that you're doing, and we understand that what you're what you're doing, but we have to ask. Um, over the several years, last several years, the chambers uh, we we just haven't been approaching the the city for additional funding on top of this. Things like like the parade and and uh, just different events that we do that we used to ask for, we we quit asking for that, and instead we're uh, we're coming up with other means and 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 ways to uh, to 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 pay for. For these events that we do and in fact are are contributing to the city when we have our golf tournament we we pay for the fees um we bring money in through the parade we bring money in through our 500 for foodies those kinds of programs are to generate economy and uh an economy of scale and um we're uh, we're actually looking to to continue to support uh businesses that stimulate and sustain economic supporting uh, activity uh, funding from the city of Rock Springs is applied to our budget, and and uh, we, what we do with with this money that we ask for is we we try to hire good quality people. And right now we've got a fantastic staff, an amazing staff, uh, with full of talents, full of ideas, full of ways to to help promote the city of Rock Springs and to promote um, our, our our people and to improve our our quality of life. And with these uh, with this staff, it's it's a uh, we're appreciative of the work that they do also um they work hard and they work hard for the right reasons but they need a good salary to in order for us to keep them because it is kind of a revolving door at the chamber as as all of everybody's working with right now as you're painfully aware uh the costs of everything has, have increased and it's been stated already and you're going to hear it from every person that stands at this podium tonight um it's our hope that you understand the unassumed request for a small increase and are able to see the return on investment in the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce. Um, if if you don't, then that, I'm failing at my job and we probably need to have a side conversation. But I appreciate appreciate all the work that you do. We appreciate everybody in this room um, that make this the greatest community in the in the world. And so thank you to everyone who, uh, who work hard and, uh, and diligently serve this community. So thank you. If there's no questions, I'll, uh, I'll turn the mic over. Question. Rick, of your membership, it's on. Yeah, um, of your membership, what percentage of that those fees cover your overall expenses? For for the overall expenses, the membership fees and the dues are are actually threefold. Where it's a three three um, leg stool. We have dues, non due revenue, and then and then grants. Um, the percentage that come from the membership is right about uh, 35 percent so it, it's split about in thirds okay other questions I, I just quickly want to thank the chamber for everything you do in support of the community and rock springs city and, and being on the events complex board as well you guys are active in helping uh, in a lot of those events, and it's very much appreciated. So, thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I would invite Star Trek. Hello. My name's Mary Seppi. I'm the director of Star Transit. We run the public transit here in Rock Springs. And if most of you know me, but some of you don't. So we are coming to you tonight. I'm not gonna take up much of your time. I know you have a lot of requests. I know you have a big job. I stress every year, this time of year, so I can imagine what you're going through. Jeannie knows, she sees me. I lose my mind a little bit about this time of year, just thinking, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? What if this and what if this? So, you know, what will be, will be, and we're happy for any funding we do get, and we'll just have to adjust accordingly. What we come to you for the funding for is we are primarily funded by a Federal Transportation Administration federal grant. It's a 5311 grant, and we are coming to the city and the county and the city of Green River, 
to provide the matching funds for that grant. If we can provide the matching funds, we will get that federal money. And so we budget based on our budget, and then I apply those percentages for those um, particulars of those grants. And then whatever I need for those grants to go after, that's what I come to you guys primarily for, for the, the funding. We do have some other little sources of income, but majority is it's the county, the cities, uh, because that, those are the primary areas we do serve. Um, so this year, I know you're facing, we're all facing the same things. Everything's going up, gas has been going up. We're trying to pay people, just like everyone's saying here, it's very hard to keep wages competitive. I mean, the school district pays better than we do, and they can't keep people. Um, we also have some CDL requirements that were, have limited us a little bit. We're hoping that by moving to smaller buses in the future and getting out of that CDL requirement, that we can get more people, but that, again, will depend on funding. So I have asked for the $34,000 this year. Last year, we asked for a little bit more, and we were funded the 34. So I've just decided we'll just stay with the 34 and see you know, where the cards fall with you guys and after you, ha you do all your funding requests and things like that. And I, we, have, we were OK last year because we came in a little bit under budget because we weren't able to hire people. So we have some budgets. I'm hoping that we can fill those. But because of that, that allowed me to keep things about the same this year. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions for me. I always appreciate the funding. I Every time I'm in here, though, I hear all these things. And we're all in the same boat. And it really makes you feel for other people and entities, too. Like I, The kids, I'm, I'm a mom. So you know those kids resonate with me, too. And exactly what she's saying, keeping them safe and things like that. But this service is more for our seniors. Um, that's primarily who we serve. And then we also have a lot of the community. We've had a lot lately uh, that are utilize a wheelchair. That kind of transportation is almost impossible for them to, you know, get their own vehicles and things like that. So we provide that service. It's a very low fare. Our seniors ride for free. And it's $2 for everybody else that's over 10. Um, so it's a very low fare as it would be because it's basically federally funded and it's subsidized. Um, but that's the reason transit can run, public transit. If public transit does not run on its own. It never does anywhere. So this is, this is the way that it is. Um, we feel like we've gone to an all door-to-door -door service now. We did have a route, uh, but after COVID, it was hard to staff the route, and it was hard to justify all the costs of running that bus on that route all the time, even when there were people, weren't people. So now we do door-to-door -door service. They call in. They make the ride. And then we go to their door, we pick them up, we take them to the destination. And we have had to back off a little bit lately because we didn't have as much staff, but now we're staffed up again. Hopefully we can start doing some same day rides, which really people really like, they don't have to call and schedule. They just call that same day and they can go and they can go home. And so, um, but again, that's always based on staffing, you know, because you can't provide that kind of service without enough staff. So that is why my request is in to you is to provide those matching funds. So. If you have questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Your Honor. <clears throat> so just out of curiosity, what is your major expense going into next fiscal year for the capital expenditures? That's quite the jump. There. It is. It is. Okay, so here's what happens. We don't come to you guys for any of the capital, just so you know. Um, it's primarily done through our federal grants, but we are behind two years on our buses, and so we've got to, they were actually in some of our prior actual budgets, but like I said, we don't really do that, anything to do with that for you guys. But because things got so far behind, we're actually trying to get three buses. There's two in the past, and there's a current bus um, that's in that, that funding request right there. And they're running about one hundred and five to $10,000 a bus now, where we were paying about eighty <laughs> before COVID. And so that's the majority of the big... Um, increase that you see in that capital. And the match for that, we also have to come up with. But we usually do that by either selling the bus. We can provide some of that match. And then we have some reserves from prior years when we used to do some contracts. We're trying not to dig into those reserves because we'd like to have a building eventually. And so that's kind of what those were set aside to do. But you know, things being how they are, we have to either pull for reserves if we don't get fully funded. And that's also where we'll pull any differences for our uh, capital funding. So this is primarily just operating is what we're coming to you for. 
Your Honor. Yes, sir. Now, will those be bu uh, those buses be the downsized buses to kind of uh, facilitate the yes the yes. CDL they, requirements? Yeah, they're they're fourteen passenger buses. Okay, and so it doesn't require the CDL. And we were headed that way before COVID, and then it blew up, and we managed to get one bus. You know, right right as COVID was in the middle of COVID, we got one bus slid in there that we had done a prior grant for that they were able to deliver on. And then the next year, they basically told us, don't even put in for that grant money because we're not getting you a bus. So we didn't even, well, there was one year last year where we didn't even put in any capital request or anything to SLIB or anybody else. So, so yeah, we're excited to get the small buses. And How are the ridership numbers? Are they um, they're good. They're um for what the staff we actually have, they're not as good. If you look at our ridership from prior years, you have to remember we were also running a fixed route. So that did add. Um, in 21, we got some new software that allowed us to go door to door. I think maybe the prior software was inflating the figures just a little bit. I'm not sure how, but just looking at it now, being able to really see into those figures a little bit more with this software, I think it might have been you know, um, inflating and maybe counting something a little bit different than what we needed it to count, but there was no way to really look into that prior software. So we're looking at about, we average between 1,300 and 1,600 um, rides a month. And so, and that's really for the staff we have, it's, it's actually very good. Last month was our highest month we've had yet, which was 1,600 rides. And for my staff to do that with, <laughs> I mean, it, it's flat crazy in there some days. I can't even say. There's just days the phone's ringing and people are like, bus is blowing up. We got to go over here. We got to go over here. And it's just total chaos some days. But they managed to get it done. And um, I am super impressed with my staff. They are just, if I hadn't had this staff to go through COVID, we, we wouldn't be here. But most of them hung out through all through COVID. And, you know, they're very happy to be working. And they like to work. So I'm, I'm grateful for my staff. Okay. All right. Thank you. And thank you guys for, I know you have a lot on your plates, so thank you for considering us. For sure. I would invite the Red Desert Rodeo. Uh, let me let me have oh, one sorry. more. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Honorable Mayor and Council, I just wanted to uh, speak on behalf of STAR for a brief minute. Um, I've been on the board. I'm a long-term member of the board. My name is Steve Shea. Um, most cities have, the Rock Springs size, have to run their own bus system. And Star Transit is taking that responsibility away from you partly. So it costs you $30,000 to help us with that match. And you get a transportation system that provides a tremendous service for people that can't get around by themselves. If you can imagine, I mean, we all, everybody here has cars and trucks and ways, ways to get around. And uh, if you can imagine trying to move around Rock Springs um, without a vehicle, you know, it's pretty difficult. So we take care of uh, uh, a lot of seniors and a lot of handicapped people, and it's uh, it's a pretty important service. We keep things kind of low key, but uh, it's uh, it's something that we need uh, that the city needs. So keep us in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that at the uh, Red Desert Roundup Rodeo. Going once, going twice. Okay, if, uh, St. Christopher's Highway. I'm with oh, the Red oh, you rodeo? Sir. Sorry, I know it doesn't look like it. It but didn't. I, am. <laughs> I thought you were just going to harass David. Well, yeah, I can change a hat tonight. Fair enough. All right, glad to have uh, you, Mr. Mayor and Counselors. Uh, my name's Rick Hawkins. For those of you that don't know me, I am one board member of the seven-member board uh, that puts on the Red Desert Roundup Rodeo each year. Uh, been there for quite a few years. This year will be the 45th year of the rodeo, so it's been around for quite a while. Uh, would have been 46, but we, like everybody else, missed 2020. So um, anyway, before you, we have uh, a request for $8,400 in funding. That is the same as it was last year. Um, over the years, that re those requests between the city and the, and the county have uh, varied somewhere, 10 and 12,000 and... Here lately for the last few years has been 8,400. Uh, the rodeo will be held on the 28th and 29th of July, 2023, out at the events complex. Um, last year, we had a very good year. We had a lot of attendance. I think we broke some attendance records. And uh, 
What we've managed to do as a board is try to keep the ticket costs where they were, and we've been able to do that. Uh, part of that is uh, we have increased sponsorships um, from businesses and, and the like of that without having to uh, ask for additional funds from uh, government entities. Uh, we're proud of that fact. Um, and uh, we do get a lot of positive feedback from the folks that attended, uh, said they liked it. We did add a few things. We added a large um, video board where it had replay and stuff like that. We haven't had that in years past and got very good comments about that. But like everything else, it takes money to have that here. So, um, again, most of that, if not all of it, in fact, all of it last year was paid through sponsorships. Um, for that, we'd like to continue that. One of the challenges we see coming up is, um, I think next year we're back on for the National High School Finals Rodeo. Um, in years past, when that has happened, that's been a challenging time for us because it's we, we didn't get a lot of attendance. In fact, attendance was way down. But on the positive note, we had a lot of attendance last year, so I think there's an appetite to have that um, here again. We'll continue to have... Uh, Pre-show stuff, mutton busting, kids calf scramble, teen calf scramble, and adult calf scramble. Um, let's see. Oh, we'll also have a specialty act. A uh, person by the name of Felix Santana will be there in our, our specialty act this year. Uh, so I think that will be uh, good for the attendees. Um, the event, while it's two days, we do bring in... Um, you know, the, the contractors and stuff we have to put the show on have to stay somewhere. So it's a, it's a, you know, that's motel rooms and meals and things of that nature. So we do bring in um, revenue to the community itself. So just keep that in mind as you consider our $8,400 request, and I'll take any questions that you might have. Your Honor, can we take that $8,400 out of what the Joint Combined Communication Center is requesting? <laughs> how does a but how does a budget amendment work, Council? No, never mind. That's all right. Thank you. Question, Max. Yes, sir. Um, I see here that ticket sales are forty thousand dollars approximately, um, versus the total revenue is one hundred and seventy-four thousand. Right. Why aren't the tickle ticket sales a higher percentage of that? gross revenue we've met we've maintained the the same price for the tickets for several years and it's, it's 16 i think it's 16 dollars for an adult and um it's like 10 or less for for children so we've tried to maintain that price to get people to come out okay thank you mm -hmm. Thank you Thank very you. much. I'll be back, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, now St. Christopher's Highway, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council, for hearing from me again. Um, I would just like to uh, make sure that you know that we're really desperately in need of, of help. Our uh, The Episcopal Diocese of found uh, foundation is going to uh, fund us again this year, but uh, at a lower um, amount, I'm sure, um, because we were only supposed to be funded for three years, but they're, they're going to continue to try to help us. So we've been actively looking for money everywhere we can. Um, we've, um, we've been to the county commission, to the to the um, city of Green River, to you, to the Wyoming Community Foundation, the Mor Memorial Hospital Foundation, because we do a lot of business with them, and um, so we're, we're we're and thanks to Rick, we were able to get a big mailing out to the all the chamber members, and that's that's been fruitful. So we're being able to stay alive for the next couple months. Um, and uh, we, we're going to desperately need money. Um, the, the, our program has grown, and I think it's because we give s such good service. Um, we um, help. Our mission statement is to help travelers in need reach their destination, and that's a little bit different than the other travelers assistance program. They help you 
they all, about, about all they do is give you one night housing and maybe get you to the next town or, or at least the next city. And um, that's usually not enough. I'll tell you some of the things that happen is people have accidents, their cars are totaled, they have to have a place to stay, they don't have enough money in their jeans to to pay for motels and and whatever it takes. Um, we also provide a lot of service to the detention center um, with uh, clients who are um, not from Rock Springs, who have no way to get home. A lot of times they're in flip-flops and shorts in December when they get out of jail, and um, someone has to help them out. And so we do that, and, and we're very proud of the work we do for the detention center. Um, the hospital uses us quite often because they get people who need, need um, um, medical care and end up here but can't find a way to get back home. Um, there's just so many stories that go on and on and on about people that we have helped. Our average um, cost for, per client is $190. Um, and that's not, not a whole lot of money, but some of them are only $40 for a tank of gas. And um, what's caused us a lot of grief this year is that the, the motels have raised their prices and the gasoline price went sky high. And that, those are the main reasons we're really desperately doing fundraising besides the grant that we get from the diocese. And um, I hope that you'll consider giving us. I've asked for 10000 but take anything that you give us. <laughs> and thank you very much for hearing me. Questions? Joyce? Oh, questions. Question for <laughs> Sorry. That's right. <laughs> so that you, you'd mentioned that the diocese, that was only supposed to last for three years, but it looks yeah. like they will fund you this year. You just sound, don't know it's, We're pretty what sure they will because um, um, they've seen the value of this program. Mm -hmm. Um, we've, we've, some, we've had, I, I wish I could just tell you story after story because then you'd see what we do. And it's only volunteers who work. I'm a volunteer coordinator and um, we have no administrative costs except a phone and expenses for the volunteers so they aren't having to pay for gasoline and everything out of their own pocket. Um, but then all of our money goes to clients. So in, you're just anticipating that the funding will be cut short from what it usually it, has? It, not, or it may you, be. Do you know when you would know um, for sure? uh, Bernadine is going to the, the foundation on the, in July. Okay. Yeah. And um, I love this program. I want to tell you, I'm addicted to it <laughs> because... W what we do is just totally amazing. And we have like six active volunteers who take the phone for a few days or a week at a time. And every one of them is um, just dedicated to it. Um, but that it's also our hardest job is to find volunteers who are willing to put themselves out, with sometimes with people that aren't very fun to be with um, and so it's hard to find volunteers and that's practically my main job is looking for volunteers so if anybody wants to volunteer tell me now <laughs> <laughs> so misery loves company is what you're saying <laughs> now you're, that, that addiction goes through huh? um, this year with the road closures what oh, they were we spent fifteen thousand dollars just in january and february okay that was and, and it was because people were stranded for five and six days at a time and they needed food they needed everything they were it was you know and i always say it's amazing to me how many people live on the edge and travel especially travel i-80 <laughs> It's really amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would now invite the Real Rovato Recycling Center up.
Mayor, Councilors, Devin Brubaker, uh, President of the Ray Lovato Recycling Center, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that focuses on two things in our community. First, uh, and uh, the most obvious, is recycling, uh, solid waste here in the city of Rock Springs. The second and less obvious is providing employment opportunities for individuals that uh, may have made some previous poor decisions in their life and are looking to turn their life around. Uh, some individuals that have uh, been born or been dealt with um, learning disabilities or physical disabilities that not necessarily uh, can find employment in other areas uh, that we can offer employment. And so the organization uh, has dual roles with both of those. The request before you today is for $30,000. Um, it represents a 3.45% or $1,000 increase over last year's request. Um, we recognize that we were not funded for the full amount last year, recognize the pressures you all are under. Unfortunately, due to multiple years in a row of not being funded at the amounts that we've requested from the Solid Waste District, um, and uh, you all in the most recent year, uh, we did tap into the cash that we had on hand, which was very little, and that cash is quickly dwindling. So we're, that's why we're back with this request. We recognize uh, the challenges you all face. Uh, just a few numbers for you. Um, when we took over the recycling center in 2017, uh, when our board, our new board took it over in 2017, it was on the brink of closure and had processed just about 780,000 pounds of recycling. Uh, this last year, we did over 2 million pounds of recycling. Um, and as a reminder, we do it all by hand. There is no automation. Every pound, every ounce of that recycling is processed by hand. I wish I could tell you how many pounds that we've actually touched because there is obviously a large amount of trash that gets brought to us that is not recyclable. Um, and that ends up going to the landfill. But uh, this last year, we diverted over 2 million pounds. This year, we're on pace for 2.4 million pounds. Um, and that is without uh, upgraded equipment, without upgraded technology, and with uh, a challenging environment, as others have said, in trying to find help. Uh, we pay most of our employees $12 or less per hour, which is, I'm embarrassed to even say that out loud in public. Um, we quite frankly just can't afford to pay anymore. And so it's definitely not a situation of us paying a bunch of money and and uh, the reality is, I think we're, we're up to over 60 different employees we've had since October because people don't want to work for 12 bucks an hour very long. We just can't afford uh, to pay more. Um, I did mention last night uh, from a question uh, from Councillor Hickerson about equipment. Uh, you all know what our aspirations are long term to get to curbside recycling and really, if you will, blow up recycling in Sweetwater County. Uh, to that end, we have made <clears throat> a down payment on a new $140,000 baler, and that's largely been made possible by the Kim and Jody Brown Family Foundation. Um, they have made donations over the last three years that covered approximately half of the cost of that baler. Uh, so the down payment has been made. Uh, we'll have to make the final payment here in June, July timeframe when it's delivered. So this funding will help us make that uh, investment as well, as well as cover our operating expenses. Um, that new baler and uh, feed conveyor will result in us uh, receiving approximately 20% uh, more per ton because we'll be able to bale products that we currently cannot bale because our baler is not strong enough. Uh, so instead of shipping it loose, we'll be able to ship it in bales, which gets you a higher uh, revenue per bale. The bales will be approximately 20% heavier, uh, ensuring that we can uh, spread the shipping costs out over more tons uh, in the truck, which is great. Uh, one of our biggest and most exciting things is we will no longer have to remove lids off bottles once we get this thing. We burn thousands of man hours just taking lids off of bottles to be able to recycle plastic, unfortunately. Uh, the feed conveyor will allow us to uh, take care of material much faster. This last weekend, I spent, I don't know, 12 hours shoveling shredded office paper into one of our balers. 
Um, that was about 5,500 pounds using a snow shovel. Um, with this new baler and feed conveyor, we will simply be able to take a broom and push it onto the conveyor. And then instead of taking that long to do about five, five and a half thousand pounds, we'll be able to do it in about an hour, hour and a half. So there's many, many benefits of having this new equipment. It's imperative we get it installed. It'll improve our efficiency and hopefully I'll be able to come back to you all next year because of that improved efficiency when we can actually calculate it and realize it, be able to come with, to you all with a decreased request for funding. Did, um, did we record that? Did, I said hopefully. That, um, I said hopefully. That, that, okay. <laughs> so, um, Mayor, Councilors, happy to answer any questions. Um, and as I said last night regarding the airport, and I will say later about the airport again, if there's ever anything uh, you guys want to meet one-on-one -on, -one on, you want to come down to the center and see what's happening, I will tell you the center looks terrible. And if there's anybody in the community that's listening, it looks terrible right now. We are down to two employees right now. We had a broken baler last week. And then if you all recall, the waste haulers didn't do the waste for a week. So we got two weeks of it all in one week. Um, and people, I guess, apparently are buying a lot of product for spring projects. I think you buy a lot of stuff for spring projects. I think uh, roughly half of your two million pounds last year was <laughs> from my house. But the, the center is a disaster right now. We're very aware. So if there's anybody here, I know you just did a call for volunteers, but even if all you have is 30 minutes to come toss cardboard, sort plastic, help us clean things up. We desperately need the help. Uh, thanks, a huge thanks to the sheriff for sending down their work crew today. Um, that They got nine bales of cardboard done today, and it doesn't look like they even touched a thing down there, but they were working their tails off and got nine bales done. It's one of those jobs, it's like Groundhog Day. You get done at the end of the day and think you accomplished something, and by the time you come back at 8 a.m., it doesn't look like you did anything the day before. So. Um, the team down there that is working their tails off, it, it's just a never-ending battle, so. Council? I've got a question. I've been down there fairly recently, and you got, you're always going through a lot of, a lot of trash to recycle. Um, curious to know commodity price, prices, cardboard, plastics, are those holding? Because you had given us a presentation last year, maybe, and with the range of where you felt prices would be and how's that holding out for you uh terribly um so excellent question mayor Ken and councillor zadi um the markets during the pandemic um obviously i hate talking about positives that occurred because of the pandemic because there's so much negative but recycling markets were one of the silver linings of the pandemic uh the demand for paper products and plastic products skyrocketed worldwide during the pandemic which resulted in the demand for these products, recyclable products. And so we were getting record high prices for cardboard. We were getting record high prices for paper. That's what helped buoy us through the lower amounts of funding that we had. Unfortunately, October of last year, the markets just tanked from $120 a ton for cardboard to negative uh, $15 for cardboard. They are back up to about $20 to $25 a ton. And we're seeing it pretty steady at that rate right now. Um, and there is anticipation that the demand will return. The problem is, is with the hyperinflation we've experienced it, and what it's doing to our economy, there's less demand for uh, consumer goods, which means there's less demand for cardboard boxes. There's less demand for the materials that are made out of recyclable products. So it's all a supply and demand world. It's one of the biggest challenges we face outside of our equipment and labor issues. The, the biggest is how do we navigate the market conditions. Our business plan that we have established for the future with curbside recycling addresses the ebbs and flows of the market by charging a processing fee per ton. Um, and so it makes it a self-sustaining viable operation, but we got to get to the point that we can make that capital investment. All of our funding requests we make every year includes literally no money for capital. It's it's just to keep the center open, the doors open, the lights on. Um, and so we're we struggle with it mightily. We need to make those investments to be able to get to the scale necessary to become self-sustaining. It amazes me the swings. Oh, it's it's, it's terrible. Negative 15 to yeah. Yeah, and it, it can happen in a month from 120 to negative 15 like that. 
So, okay, Council. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I would now invite <laughs> the Sweetwater County Board of Health up, please. Good evening, Mayor Mickelson and counselors. My name is Kim Lyonberger, and I am the director for the Sweetwater County District Board of Health. And I am here for the first time ever <laughs> requesting an amount of $87,628. Historically, funding for the Board of Health comes from um, federal funding that gets passed through the state that comes to our organization. Um, it also comes from other state funds, and the majority um, comes from the county. So um, in fiscal year 22, the um, Board of County Commissioners cut our budget 20%, which represented about $135,000. Um, we received the same amount of funding this fiscal year, and I will be requesting the same amount of the county um, the fiscal year 24. Um, in 23, the board um, identified, the attorney for the board, um, identified a statute that said that the board um, of District Board of Health um, should be requesting funding from both of the cities in addition to the county commissioners. And so that is why I'm here for the first time to request that funds to um, be in compliance with that agreement between the board of health and the county commissioners. Um, the District Board of Health um, exists because of various different um, state statutes related to immunizations, related to um, maternal child home visiting services, um, environmental health, emergency preparedness. Um, we weren't the most popular people during the pandemic, <laughs> um, but we uh, didn't lose any staff members. So about 86% of our budget is to um, staff the department, and that stays pretty much the same and consistent. It's about 16 employees, and that's um, been about what we've had for about the 10 years that I've been there. So we don't have a lot of turnover, um, but that is the majority of our budget. Um, with COVID, um, we did have to surge capacity up to like an extra 50 people um, that we were able to use COVID funds to basically do that. But in those instances, which I hope I hope, I hope, <laughs> I never have to see again. Um, we are able to do the work that we have to carry out per statute with the current staff that we have right now. Um, we were able to float that 20% cut um, because of COVID. We did receive COVID funds. We received a significant amount of um, injection fees from COVID shots that we likely will never have to <laughs> have to do again. Um, that has decreased, and I don't think that we will anticipate seeing those types of um, revenues from injection fees like we have for the last two years. So that's why we've been able to kind of float that 20% um, cut from the county. I will be requesting um, funds from the city of Green River for the first time as well. Um, what I did was I took that 135,000 that we were cut um, and split it 65-35, 65 65% to City of Rock Springs, 35% to the City of Green River to kind of bring that 135,000 back into our budget. So that's um, where that number came from. Council? Yes, sir. Where are you gonna go? No, I was just in my head. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a little sorry, bit of hair sorry. <laughs> um, so can you tell me how you came a, about the percentage? 65, 35. Just population, Rock Springs being larger than Green River and encompassing like the areas of Superior and kind of out that direction. And then Green River would have like Granger in that every, uh, area. We have the whole county that we have to be looking at. And then Rock Springs is just the majority of the population in the county. Okay. And how much is the county still subsidizing? They or? will be, it's about 30% of our budget. So the 87,000 that I'm requesting city of Rock Springs is about a 5% of our total budget. Okay. So they do and, about 30%. And just for the record during COVID, I, th I thought your, um, your department did a great job, uh, regardless of the public sentiment. Thank um, you. I, I think that, uh, you really provided a, a great service to the community. Thank you. Absolutely. Council. <clears throat> I would, it was it, is it statute thirty five one one oh one? Do you know? The, oh. That's the request for that that says that I. It's, it's thirty five one three oh four e is the statute that identifies um, that we shall request funding from um, the county commissioners and then the cities because we're a district um, board of health and not just a regular. Um, the majority of the state functions by a city or a state and county split. So. 
Okay. Most other public health um, entities in the state, in the county, are split between um, state and county, and we are actually our own entity being a board of health, and so that's what st statute that is. I'm sorry, what was that again? You said the state, on most places, mm -hmm. the state participates. Yes, it does. So, does. We, so we don't have state employees, we don't have county employees, but other, like if you go to Uinta County, their um, public health office is a mix of state employees and county employees. Where here in Sweetwater County, we're District Board of Health employees. But the state does fund about 408,000 for public health um, services every year, and then we also receive funding for the maternal child um, home visiting program, um, in addition to the state funding that we get to carry out like immunizations and communicable disease services and um, those other types of activities. I'll just say for my part, we're gonna do our best. Okay, thank you so much, thank I you. appreciate it. I would invite the uh, treatment court of Sweetwater County up. Good evening, uh, Mayor Mickelson and um, city council members. Um, I was just here recently, um, kind of told you a little bit about our program. We were able to um, provide evidence of our program with a couple of um, our alumni participants. Um, I kind of went over some numbers at that point in time, um, talked about how um, one individual in treatment court saves the community $13,000 a year. Um, we served 38 last year, and so that would be a total of um, $494,000. Um, we're requesting $18,000 um, this year. Um, the reason for that is um, last year um, we utilized the $8,000, which has been so beneficial to us um, for, it's been beneficial to us for um, case management, community monitoring, um, treatment, family counseling, trauma therapy. Um, and so we're keeping that specific um, amount the same. Even though we have more participants, we've been very frugal with that, and so we're able to to utilize that for more participants, that same amount. The $10,000 comes from the Im implementation, I talked briefly about it last time, of the DUI, DW, DUI DWI program, which will be um, an extension of treatment court of Sweetwater County. Um, we are asking um, the city of Green River and the county for funds for this as well. We were just accepted today into this very exclusive national um, implementation training of which is free and we were endorsed by um, YODOT in order to be able to attend that. Um, we do um, need some training um, funds just to able to get there. Um, we did pick um, a place that was close and that was in Fort Collins, so um, reduced expense there. The um, specific things that we're asking um, within the 10,000 is the um, alcohol and GPS monitors, so they're portable. Um, they take um, a biometric of the offender's um, face and then also let us know where they are and then um, takes a alcohol test with that as well. Um, and that would equal, we need uh, six of them, so that would be um, $4,800. And then additional expenses would be the training cost that we talked about, and that is about 3000 that we would be asking from the city of Rock Springs. Um, and then the 2200 for additional substance abuse and counseling services for, um, we expect a decent influx um, in clients um, with the implementation of this track. So, um, and then I, you know, I, I gave you a few numbers. I won't go over those again when it comes to um, the DUI problem that we have in Rock Springs and what is actually costing us. Quick question, sorry. You mentioned 
alcohol and what monitors? I'm sorry, what was what that? What were the monitors again? You said The monitors are alcohol monitors. Um, some of them are transdermal, so they stay on your skin. Mm -hmm. So they'll read consistently if someone has consumed alcohol. And then we also have portable monitors. It's like a, a breathalyzer okay. um, as well. Council? Just, just reflecting back last night on what <clears throat> Chief Eris Parmel had uh, said in that Sweetwater County, we have 10% higher arrest rate for alcohol issues than any other community in the state. Is that correct? Uh, correct. Alcohol is involved in the state. And that's, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to the Joint Powers Combined <laughs> Communications Board. David, please come up. Good evening again, Mayor, Councilors. I brought backup just in case. <laughs> My name is Rick Hawkins. I'm the Executive Director at the Combined Communications Center. This is David Halter. Uh, he's our IT Director, Combined Communications Center. Um, before you have our, our uh, budget for fiscal year 2024, um, the short story on the budget for 2024, I know I put a uh, uh, request for justification message in the application that indicated the uh, percentage of increase was 11.01. Um, we had a calculation error in a spreadsheet. It's truly 9.41. So since it's less, is that good enough? <laughs> anyway, the, the increase that we're requesting for this year um, is like I've already heard uh, from uh, Councilor Zadi and uh, some of the folks that have presented, we too have been using reserve funds to maintain the center's function over the last several years. Um, and we have also let uh, equipment go uh, beyond repair and let a lot of it go to end of life. So we are at the point now where we have to start replacing some of these things because they are critical systems. What we've been able to do is we've been able to do this in kind of a phased approach. Uh, so computer IT stuff, things of that nature, David's doing very well on that and able to do this through, uh, like I say, a phased approach instead of having to do it all at one time. Um, we take a little bit of a look into uh, crystal ball about some things that are coming down the pipe in probably about five years-ish. They're gonna be some big ticket items. You're talking most likely million dollar, million and a half dollar items that will come up for end of life and replacement. So you'll notice a little bit of our request is reserve funds, as you talked about. We thought we would begin doing that as a capital replacement reserve, so it's not just a straight up reserve. Um, and that is in this particular budget and, and broken out. Um, also, our employees, um, we have put in there a dollar per hour raise. We currently have a, a pay scale that goes with length of service, time in service. You get a particular step raises within their grade of pay based upon their certification level. So in order to maintain the integrity of that particular system, we did a flat dollar an hour raise across the board instead of a percentage raise. Um, that also takes into, it was a dollar an hour raise for the uh, salaried employees, which there are to me and, and David as well. Um, let's see. We have applied and will continue to apply for grant funding to offset these costs as best we can. I'll explain a little bit of a limitation on some of that. Some of the uh, funding requests must be requested by the state of Wyoming in order for us to be eligible to ap apply for them as well. And not all of them are. I know I've talked to this body before. I don't think maybe all of you were here. Um, I can give you a good example of that. A few years ago, there was a round of grant funding for a, a system called NextGen 911. 
uh, the state of Wyoming was not eligible to even apply for that because of the, the layout that they had at the state government level for certain plans and supervisors of plans. Well, the state has rectified that now. They have a 911 coordinator. We have a statewide interoperable plan. So if that funding comes available again, we will at least be able to apply for it. So um, let's see. That is uh, what I have for the um, increases in the budget. Oh, excuse me, one more thing. The uh, uh, maintenance fees for all of our equipment continue to rise um, <laughs> quite a bit. It, it's been 15, 17, 18%. It's, and some of those are fairly substantial. So you'll notice there's fairly large uh, increase in the O&M. That's where they're at as far as the budget goes. Okay. Um, with that, uh, do you have something to add, David? Yeah, just to touch on the capital projects um, we have for uh, fiscal year 24, 177,000. Um, I, I believe I've sent some of this out to you guys. Uh, for the next five years, we have our capital improvement plan. As we kick the can down the road, a lot of those projects just get shoved in the years following. So in fiscal year 25, we have almost a million dollars in capital projects on the list. So we're trying to phase a lot of it in, like Rick had said, um, but there, there's just some items that are no longer supported by some of the vendors that we um, that support our system. So um, that's kind of where we're at at this point. So we're trying to recover some of that capital and replace some of those systems that are aging. So other than that, I'd, I'm open to questions as well. Council? Got yes, some I have a statement, oh, more or less a statement. I'll go on the record as saying, as I honestly believe that the the funding ratios and percentages need to be tweaked. Um, I believe the county needs to pay a bigger share of the operating uh, funds. A uh, question I have concerning the surcharge on phone bills. I've talked about this and I'm going to harp on it every single time because I think it's something that needs to be done and needs to be increased because of the expenses we're looking for. Is there still work towards addressing that issue? Where are we with that? Is there support around the state for it? Um, are you looking at me? What's up with Whichever one. <laughs> Who wants to answer? Government. So there, there is. Uh, th there is, <laughs> Councilor. Um, yeah. I can tell you we've made presentations to uh, the Wyoming Association of Sheriffs and Chiefs of Police because this particular topic did not make a general budget session for this year. However, we've approached two entities. Uh, WASCOP is what they are for short. We've approached them at, at, um, to make this an interim topic for the legislature to address next gen 911 funding and 911 funding. Now, we didn't make suggestions, we didn't make <laughs> anything like you're talking about specifically to increase a fee, but those were um, quite obvious when we compare how we collect money compared to other states. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other one is, I know at one time joint transportation at the com county commissioners had uh, expressed some interest in that, but I don't know a status on that one yet. So uh, is it being talked about? Yes. Uh, do we have a concrete plan? Not that I'm aware of yet, but that is being addressed by the groups that the 911 coordinator at the state has put together to address next gen 911 funding and 911 funding. But that, those are high dollar items. So I, I would hope that there would be some willingness to talk about that and increase that fee. And for those that don't know, every phone line, there's a fee charge on your bill. And what is it in Wyoming? Or what do we have it 75 at? 75 cents. 75 cents. And surrounding states, what's the average? I know we're quite lower than, do you recall? Most of them are at least $1.50. So we're collecting 75 cents per line and surrounding areas and states are collecting around a dollar fifty or so and that's a huge 
amount of funding that we're missing out on, especially when we're dealing with uh, cost of equipment and then a mandate really to go to these next generation things and that as well. So we don't have a choice but to move in that direction. We just don't get the funding for it. And that's something I think we really need to start pushing our legislators for is a willingness to increase that fee. Um, the second thing was the auditing factor. I know Colorado, has there been any ground made up or any advancements made on that in Colorado? I think that's what we're kind of looking for them as the they, poster they child. They have not given us <coughs> as of yet the the rules and stuff that they have come up with for an audit, but I do know it is part of their plan. They intend to do so okay. and I, they'll share it. It's just sure. a matter of having, having it done. And, so. and for that, you don't know, um, we rely upon the phone companies and telecom, telecoms to give us those funds back, but we have no way of auditing whether or not we're collecting enough for each line that's there. So it's, we're really, at the mercy of the phone companies and the telecoms to do the right thing and give us the proper amount, but we have no way of knowing if it's right or wrong. So Colorado so, is working on a way to audit that. And I think that's, correct me if I'm wrong here, we're kind of looking to them as the lead on how to proceed in Wyoming potentially. Yeah. Is that on cell phones also? Yes, mm -hmm. it's on phones now. Um, if we step into the century we're in now and the way that we communicate, I'll tell you what is missing, and, and it's known at the state, what is missing is collecting those fees on broadband connections. Broadband connections are not addressed in the state statute. Okay? I can tell you that because we've, we've talked about this a lot. Okay? Um, if you all don't know, there are pendants, there are medallions, there are medical appliances that can call 911 on a broadband connection, okay? So, is it something that we can do? Yes, it does take legislative change to do so though at the state level. Does that include all the voice over IP, like offices and that that have the VoIP systems? Those are supposed or? to be collected now, okay. but they fall into the same categories as cell carriers. Yeah. Yeah. And today we're operating on voice and text with next gen 911, they're also looking at images and video. So if we don't capture the broadband side of it, we're definitely missing on opportunity there. So, and just so you guys are aware, our, our revenue on 911 has been fairly flat over the last five years. Uh, it's about 400,000 a year. Um, prior years, um, shoot back in 2012, it was closer to 900,000. So there was a, a very sharp decrease in the um, between 2012 and 2016. So, um, but we have been flat since then. Wow. Council? Can you give me the percentages, a breakdown of Rock Springs, Green River, and? So by dollar or by percentage? Percentage. Uh, <clears throat> right now, the, the funding formula for the Joint Powers of Green River is 43% City of Rock Springs. 32% city of Green River, 25% county. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. That goes to my point. This is new news, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just don't think it's talked about enough. No. And Rob, out loud. Rob brings up a very good point, and I echo what he said on the, on the collection of fees. Somehow, some way, it's got to be figured out. Yeah. Well, is there anything we can do to help lobby or anything? Let us know. <laughs> yeah. When it gets there, counselor, believe me, I will be sounding <laughs> bullhorn to make that happen. So. Yeah. Um, I think and, all of us up here are certainly empathetic to the need to replace aging equipment and deal with capital reserves and improvements. It's a a real issue. We've got some. Uh, vehicles and equipment out there that I pretty quickly could be on Antiques Roadshow. Uh, so I feel your pain. Thank you. Uh, one more comment oh, about yes, the formulation. Um, 4332.25, but what is the, do you know what the actual cost for each of those entities is on a breakdown? Yes. It's on your yeah. The dollar amounts should be right <coughs> under there under entity amounts 
<laughs> Which is not reflective of the use. I think if you'd probably flip that 180 degrees, you'd have a better idea of the. You probably use it more than greener. Yeah, you go right now. It's got us greener over. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Page one. Uh, fair, fair. Because it is, the county is what, roughly, what do they use, about 50%? There are so many metrics to define usage that I probably wouldn't hazard a guess on what fair. that is. <laughs> so. Uh, so greater than or less than the city of Rock Springs. <laughs> Yeah. Equal, <laughs> real dang close. Okay. Equal, fair. fair. <laughs> Said equal, not yeah. twenty percent less. In my opinion, it's equal. Yeah. Could we get some kind of trade where we pay twenty five percent for five years, and then they go to forty three? Whatever you can negotiate, <laughs> right? I, I, I'm just here to report the news on this. Yeah, one, so. yeah. No, appreciate it. In other words, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, and we are <clears throat> visiting with the county commission, so hopefully we'll get somewhere. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. I would now invite Southwest Wyoming Regional Airport. After that, everything will be easy, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some good news. I, I promised good news last night, didn't yes, I? Yes, you did. All right, I better remember what that was. <laughs> All right, Mayor, Councilors, uh, once again, Devin Brubaker, uh, Changing Hats, uh, Airport Director, Southwest Wyoming Regional Airport. Uh, Southwest Wyoming Regional Airport is operated uh, by a joint powers board that is formed by the city of Rock Springs and Sweetwater County. Uh, this council has two appointees. The county has three appointees. Uh, the Joint Powers Agreement is written that the funding deficit for the airport is split two-thirds county, one-third city. So formula that maybe works in your guys' favor a little bit there. So um, I will point out that uh, I, think it, I think you all know this, but two of my five board members sit before you as well, Matt McBurnett to my right and our chair, Jim Walmsley, to my left. Uh, so if you want to beat us up on anything, just beat them up. I, I, I need a break. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, before you today is a funding request for $220,000 even. It represents an 18.52% increase compared to last year's funding level. However, that represents a 28.2% decrease compared to 2019's funding. And it takes us back to 2013 funding level. Uh, for the airport board. So we recognize that it is an increase. It represents about a $34,384 increase uh, compared to last year. Uh, our mission to become self-sustaining is still there and continues to uh, move forward. The challenge that we have faced uh, is the fact that the aviation industry has not recovered from the pandemic yet. Uh, we are still at 50% commercial airline flight activity at the airport which results in our revenues for commercial airline activities being down by 50%. Um, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and the good news is that we believe the bleeding has largely stopped. Uh, we are going to see on May 4th the addition of two weekly round trips. So we're going to go from seven to nine weekly round trips. Uh, Pre-pandemic is 14, so it's baby steps, but it is a step in the right direction after a very long uh, 15, 16 month hiatus of not having a second flight. There are some opportunities potentially on the horizon uh, that could result in additional flight frequency, um, but we don't have any confirmation or, or uh, surety in those happening at this time. Um, I will point out that the amount that we are asking from the city represents 2.74% of our eight, nearly $8.1 million budget. Most of our budget is funded through user fees, federal grants, state grants, uh, and interest earnings on the reserve funds that we do have. The, the funding request here represents uh, an amount that the board has decided, or the board has decided to utilize $200,000 of our reserve funds to cover some of our deficit. So uh, we did have a 300, 
and $3,000 need in addition to last year, but they chose to tap into our reserves by 200000 leaving that $103,000 increase total between the city and the county. Um, and that allows us to stay at 122 days cash on hand, which is our strategic goal for the airport board that was established in 2019 to be at 120, 122 days cash on hand. Um, we are a very high uh, expense operation, as is anything in aviation. There's oftentimes we have monthly bills that it will exceed a million dollars. And there are times that if we don't have that cash reserve on hand, we don't have money in the bank to be able to pay our bills. Contractors then believe that we can't afford to pay for projects. And then when they bid the next project, they start thinking they have to finance our projects for us because we can't afford to pay the monthly bills uh, on net 30 terms as required. Um, a couple points I'll just make about our budget. We are uh, expecting about a $285,000 increase in revenues this year or this next fiscal year compared to this current fiscal year. Expenses, we're expecting $172,000, $173,000 increase. That is largely led uh, by increased legal and insurance costs, increased utility and airfield de-icing costs. Um, it's also led by uh, facility maintenance, or I'm sorry, led by terminal not being uh, completed. Jeez, let me get my notes right. I'm usually on point with these presentations. I apologize. Um, labor expense, that was the one here. So there's a 5% adjustment that the board has uh, proposed, and we have a step and grade scale that's been in place for many years where we uh, have a reference cell. What this results in is a $1.47 uh, uh, per employee per hour increase, uh, which is a 5% adjustment. Some employees that results in about a 3% increase and some employees that results in about an 8% increase, but that helps us make sure our step and grade scale doesn't balloon and get out of control. Um, so it's $1.47 is what the board has uh, adopted in our preliminary budget at this point. Uh, we also, and I know you all are going to, sorry. <laughs> could you have done that just a few minutes earlier then i could have blamed you for me mixing up my notes that would have been great <laughs> anyway um the one thing that i think we're all going to face is i think we're all aware of rocky mountain power's intention to increase utility rates by approximately 22 uh, percent mid-year next year uh, I know our pro our electricity bill probably is pennies compared to yours, uh, but it does result in about a twenty five thousand dollar increase. Just and nothing we can really control there. We've already done all the LED lighting upgrades. We have a solar farm, doing about everything we can at the airport to keep our costs down. But uh, when a utility regulated utility increases costs by that much, we have to do something. I will note to help cover these increased costs. We have notified our tenants that we're increasing their hangar rates by 7% on July 1st. We're increasing our signatory landing fee, so airline landing fee, from $1.56 to $1.59 per thousand uh, pounds. We're increasing our non-signatory, which would be for cargo carriers and other operators, uh, the landing fee for them from $2.04 to $2.40 per thousand pounds. And then we have contractual increases to lease rates for SkyWest Airlines, Avis budget, and all, the, all of our other tenants that are under long-term leases, they have contractual built-in rate increases every year. So we're doing what we can to increase the, or increase the revenue and have the users of the airport pay. Unfortunately, because we are a rural community, we don't have the economies of scale that larger communities have. So to charge the amount necessary um, for landing fees, for instance, to cover all of our airfield costs, we would have to charge over $8 per thousand pounds landed on our runway, which would put us at the highest landing fees in the country. And we would not see any traffic. What traffic we do have would not come in anymore um, because that would just be excessive. So we're doing what we can, but we have to do it in increments. We have to try to grow activity. We are working on some very large non-aeronautical development opportunities that are long-term plays right now. If they come to fruition, the idea of uh, financial self-sustainability -sust becomes very, very realistic in a very quick matter of time if they come to reality. So, And I can speak with some of you offline about some of those items. You all recognize, I think, through our previous updates, some of the challenges we're facing right now as well as an airport board. 
So that's why we chose not to tap our reserves further. We need to make sure that we are protecting the financial health organization as we deal with some of those challenges. So I apologize for mixing up some of my notes. I really am kind of embarrassed over that. So I apologize for that, but happy to answer any questions you all have. It, it's safe to be human in this room, I promise. <laughs> Council? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Devin, again. So on your budget, what's with the large, large changes in the admin expenses, like $200,000 from the prior fiscal year to this fiscal year projected, and then $112,000 or $112, drop in so, admin expenses? Let me get to my spreadsheet here and see what your uh, – are you looking at your the city request form? Yes. Okay. Let me pull that up here so I make sure I'm looking at exactly what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So insurance and legal expenses. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Quick question on uh, the new hangar. Yes. Are we able to generate revenue off of that? Is that still trending positively? Have we seen oh, pre-COVID with that as well as gas fuel sales, things were doing doing really well. COVID hits. How are we trending now getting some of that revenue back? So general aviation is a mixed bag is the way I will explain that. Our hangar revenues off of the, the FBO, the fixed base operator facility, the general aviation terminal has been phenomenal. We set another record this year for hangar revenue. This fiscal year, we will do uh, close to $420,000 of hangar revenue just off that one building. Our fuel, excuse me, our fuel sale volume is down still compared to pre-pandemic. That is largely driven by the lack of that airline flight. Um, each airline flight uh, that operates seven days a week results in about 130,000 gallons of jet fuel. And our average margin to the airline is 80 cents um, for those flights. So you do the quick math, we're ballpark $100,000 of lost revenue because of not having that second airline flight. Um, on a positive note to you all, and I don't have the hard numbers in front of me, I know Matt would have them, uh, but your, your uh, air service costs, while you encumbered a, a large dollar amount this fiscal year, your expenditures are very, very low compared to what was encumbered um, because of the fact that we've only had that one flight and it's been full. That last month, the cost for air service at our airport was just over $5,000 total for the state and the local communities. So um, there's, a, there's a silver lining there in all of this that while we're not getting the revenue at the airport, our local go governing partners are saving money on the air service side of things right now. So... Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, sir. On the uh, projects that could be bringing in revenue, when will it, just not to put you too far on the spot, but when do you think you would know on some of those? I think uh, some of them are could be as soon as uh, here in the next six months, and others could be three to five years out. Um, it's it's tough to say because it's, uh, it's a lot of private industry development that I have no control over the timelines. I can tell you that it won't be for a lack of effort on my mine, my staff's, or the airport board's part to get it done. So we're, we're working as hard as we can. And as I've told the board, all of what we're working on could happen. None of work, what we're working on could happen or some of it could happen. But once again, it won't be from a lack of effort. So thank you. So I want to be really clear that your funding is completely dependent on flights running May 18th and May 21st. <laughs> I just, I know that I don't fly the days that you fly. There's a few people in the community that I avoid flying with them. Avis Duncan is one of them. You're, you're one of them. And uh, I won't name the rest of them, but there's a few that I will not fly the same day you fly because you have the worst luck in the world. That is true. <laughs> Completely. <accurate. laughs> oh, dear. Thank you. Okay. I would invite the uh, Young at Heart Senior Center forward. Siri. No worries at all. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> Feel free to interrupt mine. Hi, hey, I'm Misty Wilson. 
I'm the bookkeeper at the Rock Springs Young at Heart. Um, we are requesting the same amount. We didn't do an increase. Um, we, as you know, we serve all of Sweetwater County. We ensure that our seniors can stay in their homes a little bit longer pr by providing in-home services, nursing services, and home delivered meals. We also offer activities and congregate meals at the center for our seniors. We have, I, I, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but we face the same thing as all of our other nonprofit brothers and sisters do. We are facing an unexpected $40,000 in budget cut this year that we just found out about in the last couple of weeks. So we are going to struggle with that. We struggle keeping people when you start them at $11 an hour. <laughs> so you have to love what you do to do what we do. And we do. Um, we do do our best to keep our seniors in their home so they don't have to be placed in a nursing facility. And we need the city's help to do that. We need to keep our building in shape. Our food cost has gone through the roof. When I say through the roof, <laughs> we average about $14 that we spend per plate of food. Um, we do donation only for our seniors when they come and eat. We ask for a $5 donation, um, and, and when they can, they do, but we offer it for free. So when they come and they eat, that's what they get. We provide them with that, and we do that with help from the city. That's a huge benefit to us that we can do that. The cost of our food per month has skyrocketed over $4,000 just for normal deliveries. And now we have full fuel charges on our food deliveries where we didn't before. So we struggle with that, but this year we kept our request the same just because we're doing our best to fundraise and we've gotten ARPA funds and emergency funds that we're trying to offset some of that with. Um, we also have some other concerns as far as our building goes that we are trying to do upkeep as well. Um, but like I said, we're trying to do fundraising to compensate for some of that. Do you have any questions for me? Council? I think we're good. Thank okay. you so much. Um, your shots now. Last call. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'd invite the Community Fine Arts Center up. Good evening, and thank you for allowing us to come and talk about what is passionate for us, and hopefully that you'll see that it's important for the community. Um, I'm Deborah Soleil from the Fine Arts Center, and thank you, Mayor um, and Councilman. That I was really thrilled to see last month when we came and had um, Arts Month for the community, how many people really did come out for the activities and the events and the exhibits. And um, the culmination was the Mayor's Arts Award, which was a very pleasant evening. I and mean, being able to recognize those four different, well, two individuals and two organizations um, really shows how we embrace the arts here, I think. I um, pulled some quotes, and I'm just going to paraphrase a couple of things from the National Endowment of the Arts webpage about why the arts matter. That's why I'm here right now, because the arts do matter. You know, it. <clears throat> the arts matter because it illustrates a human experience, the wonder of it, the be bewilderment of it, and the whimsy of it. We're connected because of the arts. It's a form of communication. You can move people either on an intellectual or an emotional level. And again, that's why we support the arts, because we want that connection and we want to change the world. 
The arts matter because creativity is an infinite and enduring resource, one to draw upon in both the most joyous and the most challenging of moments. The arts strengthen community bonds. And that is very important to me, that the Fine Arts Center is reaching out and doing partnerships and helping others. Um, hopefully soon, <laughs> we're gonna be able to, the, our board accepted um, to help with the renovation, the re remodeling of the airport to have art components in it. And we're still looking forward to that when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and um, downtown Rock Springs, Main Street URA, we partner with them all the time. And um, upcoming, we reached out because we are part of the Sweetwater County Library System. We're not just part of Rock Springs, we are also part of the Sweetwater County. <clears throat> and the Green River Arts Council and the Fine Arts Center Board, it doesn't come from the funds that um, you provide but the board has funds. We did a, um, our first inaugural plain air competition last year over in Green River. This year it's gonna be in Rock Springs. It's June 24th and um, we're hoping to kinda get some of those people that are coming for the big Airstream convention. They're gonna be downtown on that day. Get them involved. As I understand, they want to be with the communities. So I think that's gonna be a blast. Um, There's several things that are happening between now and the new budget year. We're finishing up the Youth Arts Month um, exhibits. It's not a month now, it's as it has been for a long time, several. Um, watching the, the parents come in and letting their kids shine is really just so much fun. We've got a workshop coming up for the plein air. Um, we're seeing a focus that people want to do art themselves. So we're trying to provide more and more classes. I've done several of the acrylic painting classes and people keep asking for more. So I believe that is important for us to provide. Um, we're gonna have an artist in residence again this year and a, a course art camp that we hold for the fifth through eighth graders. And then, um, you don't have it on your calendar that I provided with the uh, budget request, but we have um, signed the redneck tenors. I don't know if you guys ever saw that on um, uh, America's Got Talent. They were one of the finalists several years ago. They have been in our state several times. Gillette has had them back twice last year, and they're planning to go to Pinedale, so they reached out to see if we had a date. So that's gonna happen uh, September 26th. But, you know, um, people aren't coming out to performances as much, especially the classic type. So I think this one, it has classical music, very, um, you're thinking tenors and opera, but they have a sense of humor that we were watching the video and <laughs> couldn't stop laughing at them. So I think that's gonna be a great, um, get a good response from our community. So that's pretty much what I have. Asking for $16,000, it is more than last year, but we are way below what we were 10 years ago. So I'm hoping that we can inch up a little bit and provide what the community is asking for. Council. Thank you. And I wish I brought a poem. This <laughs> is Poetry Month. I gave you one last year, but I didn't bring one, so I'm saving you a little bit. <laughs> but thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it very much. And I would open up for discussion. Okay, well, with that raucous din. Your um, Honor, I just wanted to point out uh, to Mr. Brubaker's comment about their service agreement. So we've, year to date, we've uh, spent 41279 on that agreement with the encumbered amount, um, including the amount we brought over from last year of 545129 Thank you. 
Okay. Well, then we will. Your Honor. Yes, sir. I would move for a 10-minute recess so I can use the restroom. <clears throat> I think we can just go ahead. and <laughs> Dude, We're going to take a 10-minute break. Make him sit for another five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost done. <laughs>